So if you've just purchased a new M1 MacBook Pro, this is the new 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro, and you own an older Intel Mac or any kind of Mac at all, how do you transfer all of the files the best way onto the new Mac and just make sure you get rid of any problems? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's jump into it. Okay, so we've got the brand new 14 inch Mac here on the left hand side and my old 13 inch Intel Mac on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly because I know you wanna get this done in the quickest time possible. So on the new Mac here on the left, I'm gonna click- British English is the main language. Yep. Press the return key. I'm gonna click English UK and we're gonna go through that. And you can see it's loading down here. So some of these screens will appear a little bit slow. And um, this is being set up for the very, very first time. So next, select your region. I'm in the United Kingdom. So I'm gonna click continue. Uh, I'm going to turn accessibility not now. And then we're going to select our Wi Fi network. Go ahead and continue on that. We've entered our password. And uh, you want to make sure you're on the same Wi Fi network as your old computer because then it's going to use your network to be able to connect the two computers. So it's saying migration assistant. If you have information on another Mac or Windows PC, you can transfer it to this Mac. You can also transfer information from a time machine backup. So I'm gonna be transferring from a Mac time machine backup or startup disk. In my case, it's from a Mac, so I'm gonna hit continue. So it says select a Mac time machine backup or other startup disk to transfer its information to this Mac. Now, this is where some people get a bit confused because you will need to go to migration assistant in your applications folder. And a lot of people get stuck here. They don't realize you have to do this step. So I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna type in, um, uh, it's in utilities, which is usually at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna go to migration assistant, which you can see here. And I'm gonna open that up. So use migration assistant to transfer information. Uh, I'm gonna click continue on this. I'm gonna enter my touch ID. And we can see that it's going into kind of like a discoverable mode. And then in a moment on this Mac, we should see our 13 inch Mac appear. So uh, how do you want your transfer? How do you want to transfer your information to another Mac? That's an important step. Hit continue. It says we're on battery. It's fully charged. So I'm going to try and do this on battery. I can plug it in if I need to. And you can see here on the left hand side, we've got our MacBook Pro here on the right now appearing on the screen. So we can select the Mac here. So I'm gonna hit continue. And you can see that the numbers are the same. So we're gonna hit continue on this Mac. And what it's gonna do now, it's transferring our information. So it's looking for applications and documents that we want to transfer. So this will take some time. Of course, if you have a huge hard drive, I have a one terabyte hard drive with lots of video files and business files. So this part could take some time. Now you can see here on the left hand side, it's starting to populate items from this Mac. And you can see it's got applications, uh, it's got my user preferences, other files and folders, system and network. Now, a lot of people will like to sometimes do a clean install. Because I have a lot of purchased fonts, plugins and applications, I prefer to do it this way, just so that I don't miss something out. Especially things like fonts that are sometimes a little bit hard to get. Now, of course, you can back up everything and do it manually. It's, it's sometimes the cleanest way, but I just find this is the easiest way of doing it. So we're gonna click continue now. It's calculating at the moment. I think we can still continue. So it's asking if we want to copy the applications. Uh, all of this seems okay. At the moment, I think it's just calculating the size. But I think if we hit continue, it says create a secure password. So uh, I'm going to create a new password here. There we go. Continue. Agree to the terms and conditions. I have read and agree to the macOS license agreement. Agree. And there we go. We can see that it says preparing to transfer user documents from the old Mac to the new Mac. Now 
Now what's strange here is it's showing an iMac on the old Mac. Now we can see they are talking to each other because the numbers are the same, but it's strange that it's showing a picture of a uh, an iMac screen, or what looks like an iMac screen. It actually looks like a new type of uh, computer or the cinema display. Now we can see on the old Mac here, we can see it's saying transferring documents from the user Mark Brown, and it's now transferring it onto this Mac. Now this process will take a long time, so I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch this entire process. I'll pause recording now and we'll come back in a little while. So we now have a time estimate appearing here at the bottom. It's saying about five hours and four minutes to transfer everything on this Mac to the old Mac. So it does take a long amount of time. I will be grabbing the power supply and plugging this in. I did think it would do it a little bit quicker. I'm sure when I did it last time, it only took about two hours. And of course this could go down. So I'll let you know how this goes. It's transferring at 36 megabytes per second, which is quite slow to be honest on a, on a Wi-Fi network. I was hoping it would be near a hundred. Uh, so, you know, you never know, this may pick up over time, but we'll come back to this uh, a little, in a little while. Just coming back in, as if by magic, it has sped up a lot here. It keeps jumping between 800 megabytes per second down to about 300 megabytes per second, but you can see how that's improved the time. Uh, I paused recording for about two minutes. We can now see it's jumping up to around six, 700, down to 400, 500 but now it's gonna take 43 minutes, so a lot quicker than the original five hours it said it might take. So hopefully we'll be done in about 45 minutes. So just jumping in here, we've been doing this for well over an hour. Uh, you can see it says 17 minutes left. However, the transfer speed is falling right down below one megabyte per second, um, one megabit per second. So it's transferring extremely, extremely slow. It's been saying about 17 minutes now, for about 30 minutes. So this does always happen. I have noticed this on past Mac transfers, but uh, it's just a little frustrating because you feel like you're getting very close to the end and then you end up just sitting watching this bar for a long period of time. So uh, I'll pause the video again and we'll jump a bit closer. Okay, so it's now saying migration complete. A restart is required to finalize your migrated settings. And you can see migration is complete on the right hand side. So it says setup assistant will resume following the restart. The computer will automatically restart in six seconds. I'm gonna hit the restart by now to speed that process up a little bit. And then we'll see what happens here on the Macs. Now often I think when you get a new Mac and you do this kind of transfer process, the new Mac can feel quite slow, but it does take a little while, especially if you're transferring entire hard drives over for the Mac to index all of those files and kind of sort itself out. So you'll actually feel your Mac feels faster after maybe one or two days use. So it's now saying transferring your information, finalizing, finalizing your migration. Let's see how long this takes. So migration summary, some things you should be aware of after completing your migration. Some documents from Mark Brown could not be transferred. And it gives me a list of these. These are kind of Premiere, it looks like a Creative Cloud ones. Uh, I don't think that'll be an issue at all. I'm actually gonna remove Creative Cloud and reinstall it so that we make sure we have the M1 versions of those programs. So I'm gonna enter my password in now. This Mac can't be connected to iCloud because of a problem with mark.beereditorskeys.com. So what you will find when you start up a new Mac, if you have cloud services like Adobe, iCloud, Dropbox, you will need to make sure you sign into all of those on the new Mac, otherwise things won't sync. And of course on the old Mac, just make sure that you not only sign yourself out, but actually unlink them from the official uh, manufacturer's website because programs like Adobe, you can only install them on a couple of Macs at one time. And if you have them on an iPad and a Mac or a desktop, you may not be able to install your applications on this new Mac. So I'm gonna go through and do that now. Now it does seem like the, uh, the new Mac has actually crashed here. As you can see, the little beach ball even keeps crashing itself. So I'm not sure what's happened here. Let's uh, hit back. That Okay, so sign in with your Apple ID. So obviously I'm gonna blur this out and we'll enter this password in. Okay, so we're now signing in with our Apple ID. So now we get through to the final setup processes. So I'm gonna leave that unticked. Let's press continue. It's checking with the iCloud status. 
So I tend to leave everything on. When it gets to these sort of uh, areas, just leave these on. These should probably duplicate what the settings were on this Mac here. Touch ID, so I'm gonna set up Touch ID now. We're gonna continue. Touch ID is ready, let's press continue. I would have liked them to have added Face ID onto this Mac um, because I have, you know, I have my Mac plugged into a monitor a lot of the time, but it would be nice if you could just open it up and it's signed in with your face. You can get this on a Microsoft Surface for many, many years, especially with the notcher there. I, did, I don't know why they didn't add that. It would have been a really nice feature and also freed up the spare key to do something else. So again, we're getting this Apple ID preferences here. I'm just going to sign into this. It's actually opening up tabs I had open on the Mac before, which is kind of crazy. So I'm gonna make sure this is signed in. And you can see what's happening now is everything is popping up asking for passwords. So this means the whole process is complete and all you'll need to do now is make sure you enter all of the passwords for your various things, Twitter, Facebook, Skype, just make sure you're signed in. There's a couple of more things I would actually recommend as well. And the first one is because this is an M1 Mac, uh, the processor is completely different. The versions of Photoshop and Premiere that I have installed already are the Intel versions. So I'm actually gonna uninstall Final Cut uninstall Premiere, uninstall Photoshop, and reinstall them just to make sure I get the M1 version so that they are the fastest version available for this Mac. Now, Apple also recommends a few other things here as well. So the first one, if you are selling this Mac, make sure that you sign out of iMessage. The next is to reset the NVRAM, and you can do that by turning off your Mac and then when it starts up, immediately press and hold these four keys together, which are Option, Command, P, and R. And then release the keys after about 20 seconds. And that just makes sure it clears the user settings from the memory. Uh, next, you wanna make sure that you unpair any Bluetooth devices on this Mac, like a mouse, a keyboard, so that you can repair them with the new Mac. And then lastly, if you are selling this, just make sure to erase the hard drive and reinstall Mac OS. I believe there is a new restart section on Mac OS, so I'm gonna take a look at that, but make sure you completely erase your Mac, sign into everything in here before you sell this Mac. So there we go, we've now got all of our original files on our Mac in the quickest way possible. So I hope that's helped you, and if you're going from an Intel to an M1 Mac, let me know in the comment section below as well, what kind of speed increases are you seeing, and are you seeing a big difference? Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you wanna see more videos just like this, don't forget to check out our other videos up here or in the playlists below, as we have a ton of videos all about tech, all about video editing, and all about creating on YouTube. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.